Look into my eyes. When you see me on a show, when you see these fans, you know you've got the best in the damn world. This is the Wrestling Matters Podcast where we stand up for professional wrestling. Here we, here we, here we fucking go. Well, enough is enough and it's time for a change. Professional wrestling, this is it. This is us standing up. Yes, 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 yes. That's 1314. Tell this. Dina, I am the best in the world. Cause that's the bottom line. Oh, beautiful, don't you? Sorry, yeah, I, I don't know why I'm thinking Chris Brown there. But anyway, welcome to another installment of the Wrestling Matters Podcast, episode 153. My name is Anthony Walker, and yeah, what a week in the world of professional wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in, as you do each and every week on YouTube, SoundCloud, Radio Big World. And the Swerve Talk Network as well. Speaking of the Swerve Talk Network, check that out each and every week. Max Wrestling, SM Show, Podcast, Ruthless Aggression Era Podcast, Offshoot Radio, Sunday Segway, and the list goes on and on. Check out all the extra stuff and all the good extra content, the new content as well that is coming on, on there as well. So you get there each and every week. For more information, go to the Swerve Talk Network on Twitter, on that Twitter page as well. Also, you can listen to this on YouTube, AJW Wrestling Matters. Also, SoundCloud Wrestling Matters podcast. Look it up on SoundCloud. Add me. Send me DMs. Do what you got to do. Download it for free as well on there. And also check it out on Radio Big World as well. Look them up on SoundCloud too. Now, also check out Mystery Island, Wrestle Island, March 26th, guys. They're coming. Check it out, facebook.com forward slash Russell Island for more information on that. Facebook.com forward slash Back to the Island as well. And a lot of good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Check out my partners, OSW TV, The Raging Falcon, RFK, RFPW as well. Check them out. Shout out to Talk Brunch, at Talk Brunch Radio on Twitter. Yeah, at, at Talk Brunch. Sorry, there's a lot to go through here. At Talk Brunch. Also, Rick Dara as well. Check him out as well. Follow him and check him out because he's the host and the mastermind behind Talk Brunch. Also, check out the Keto and Jay show. Also, check out their newest episode because I'm on it, ladies and gentlemen. And big, huge shout out to Keto and Jay because that was a fucking blast I had on their show this past week. I recorded it. Loved it. Nothing but love for it. It was just... Oh, man. We basically tore the house down, and I'm not gonna lie, guys. I ripped the f- shits out of fucking uh, what I call him, uh, what's his name, JPL on there as well, and plus a few other people as well. But like I say, all, all a lot of fun, and I'll be going back on there very, very soon. And hopefully, you guys will come on here very, very soon as well. It'll we'll probably be after WrestleMania at the rate it's going with me. But uh, we'll, we shall see, ladies and gentlemen. We shall see. Hopefully. Ladies and gentlemen, as well, check out all the other good stuff as well this past week. And uh, yeah, today's show, we're going to talk Raw, SmackDown, NXT 205, TNA, Ring of Honor. Also, predictions for Fastlane, which I recorded this past week. I'll play the audio of that as well. Plus a few things here and there as well. Rumors about Kurt Angle's WWE bound and what's going to be taking place with him. Also, could there be a possible chance in the pipelines? I know I hardly doubt it, but considering what I got this past week on Raw, could Mick Foley be coming back for one more match as well? And uh, yeah, a few other things here and there, ladies and gentlemen. A few other things here and there. So... Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to get through, a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of stuff that I want to talk about as well. So, yeah, let's kick off with Raw this past week on this edition, episode 153, Welcome to Hell, Bray. It was during the contract signing, and I'll get to this a little bit more later on, but why the fuck did the contract signing have to be the main event of Raw? I don't know. But anyway, it was the the intense moment that... um, Mick Foley and Braun Strowman had. And I said this on the Keto and Jay show too. The intense moment that Mick Foley and Braun Strowman had, the way Braun was ordering him about, do this, do that, or else, you know, leave the ring, or else we don't need you, yada, yada, yada. Foley snapped and got in Strowman's face. Now, I know this probably won't happen, but I got a vibe there 
watching that, um, watching that whole segment, WWE, or it looks like WWE, are teasing a uh, Mick Foley comeback. I know it probably won't going to happen because that poor suds had more fucking bumps and took more bumps and bruises and broke more bones and ripped off more ears than I could shake a sticker. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was it, it just got that vibe there when I was watching it, the way they were going at each other. And obviously Roman Reigns was going to come out and save the day. You know, big shot Roman Reigns. Uh, uh, you know, big, huge... Roman Reigns coming out to save the day as well. I'm sick of Roman Reigns getting made of it spots and Roman. I'm sorry, but this thing with Roman Reigns is really getting on my tits. It really is. Uh, but yeah, obviously Roman Reigns was going to come out. And my favourite segment, the you know, yeah, I'll talk about it in more depth later, where he just rammed Roman right into the ring post and uh, just broke the freaking uh, turnbuckle pad in his chest. You'll get that on Sunday. You you got you probably got that on their thing on WWE as well. You was gonna get that Sunday, so at uh, Fastlane, you you guys will probably have seen that as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, blimmin' heck, it was just it, it just got that vibe. I mean, yeah, I know I'm saying this now, guys. Before you start having a go at me, oh, Mick Foley won't do it. I already know that. I already know that. Uh, I think if Mo Mick Foley ever stepped back in the ring again, the poor bastard, he'll have, he, <laughs> I think he'd be breaking every bone in his body. I don't think he'd have a body left, to be honest. Um, but, uh, yeah, it is what it is at the end of the day. Um, also, I've heard a lot of rumours about one Kurt Angle bringing up Mick Foley. Because, obviously, we all know Kurt Angle's going into the Hall of Fame. Foregone conclusion, here and there, no problem. Uh, foregone conclusion... Here and there, it's a done deal. Angle's going to the Hall of Fame, but it's what's going to take place after the Hall of Fame. Because apparently he's been booked to go on SmackDown, apparently, from what I've heard. But there's also rumours flying around. Um, uh, I heard that he's going to be replacing Mick Foley as general manager of Raw. Now, we all know the experience he's had as a GM. He's been GM of SmackDown before replacing Heyman so he's got that little experience in there but I don't think he should be coming back and replacing Mick Foley to be honest with you I think WWE are realising that the money is where is is it you know that where the money is is having Kurt in the ring I think his matches and everything uh, I don't know if that's going to take place or not. we'll have to wait and see but should he come back and replace Mick because Mick's on the verge of leaving I mean, it's like I said on Raw, like I said on the Keter and Jay show this past week. It's gotten to the point right now with Foley on GM and Stephanie being the commissioner that Stephanie is bullying Mick Foley. It's like a bullying way of Mick Foley. When it gets to the when it gets to Monday Night Raw and Stephanie now, I mean, I love me some Stephanie back in the day and everything when she was GM of SmackDown, but fucking hell, it's getting to the point right now when I just put the mute button on. Seriously, I do not like this as Stephanie that's portraying Raw. And you wonder why SmackDown's kicking their ass more on that later. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's getting to the point right now where Mick finally stands up for himself and starts bullying, and this bullying antics from, Mick, from uh, Stephanie. I'll give you an example. Go to Raw last week when Stephanie had to drop the title. Or oh, wanted Bailey to drop the women's title, the hot potato as it's now known on Raw. She wanted him to hot the, you know, and they basically got this, she did this, you know, she wasn't going to win the title. She went backstage and spoke to Raw and spoke to Foley and said, "Where were you? Why were you backing me up in this, that, and the other?" Stephanie, did you hire him as a GM, or did you hire him as a fucking babysitter? Seriously, I mean, come on, he's not your babysitter. He's your general manager, okay? It, it, and that told me right there, guys. That segment told me in itself that Stephanie is bullying Foley. It's getting to the point right now where. It's gone from Stephanie hiring Mick Foley as a GM to Stephanie hiring Mick Foley as an outright babysitter. I mean, if you're going to bring back Triple H, then do it already, for crying out loud. But yeah, Mick Foley needs to leave Raw. He needs to get out of that general manager's position um, but and, and, you know, and just move on with his other things. Who would replace him? Would Kurt Angle fit? I don't know. There's rumours about him coming to Raw. There's rumours about him going to SmackDown also. What his future is, I don't know, but we all know he's going to the Hall of Fame, so... That's a start, I suppose. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you guys have enjoyed that as well. There'll be more talking about that, more stuff that I want to talk about later on in the podcast as well. Uh, but yeah, I'll be back right after this quick timeout, ladies and gentlemen, with uh, 
the audio from the fast lane predictions I did this past week. So I'll just play that next. And then I'll be back with Raw and SmackDown, NXT 205, Ring of Honor, TNA, Impact Wrestling, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Plus a few other things here and there as well. So stay tuned. If you enjoy the Wrestling Matters podcast, why not check out the Wrestling Matters podcast right now on YouTube at AJW Wrestling Matters. You can also check it out on SoundCloud at Wrestling underscore Matters underscore podcast. That's forward slash Wrestling underscore Matters underscore podcast. Also, check it out on Radio Big World as well. For more information on them, you can check them out on SoundCloud and the Swerve Tot Network as well. For more each and every week of the Wrestling Matters podcast, weekly podcast that talk about the best in professional wrestling today. Whether it's WWE, Ring of Honor, TNA, ICW, Progress Wrestling, and the list goes on and on. Only the best in professional wrestling. Why? Because wrestling matters, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome one, welcome all to a very special podcast, ladies and gentlemen, brought to you by the Wrestling Matters Podcast. It is the review, that's right, or the preview rather, of WWE Fastlane 2017. That's right. Coming up, as I'm doing this, it is now March 3rd, it's coming up this Sunday, and it takes place only on your pay-per-view providers or the WWE Network. God bless the network. And it is headlined by Kevin Owens and Goldberg. One-on-one for the Universal title. I almost said United States title there for some reason. Why did I say that? I don't know. But let's move on, please. So, we got uh, a load of matches. I have done predictions basically all week on other programs and other podcasts as well. Keto and Jay Show. Be sure to check that out because it was an absolute blast. Shout out to Keto and Jay. So yeah, we're going to get in to this right now. Obviously we're going to start with the kickoff show. Am I going to be watching the kickoff show? Probably not. If I'm being honest, because it is a cruiserweight kickoff show, to be honest. The cruiserweight match is going to be on the kickoff show. Like I say, am I going to watch it? Probably not. But apparently it is, if I remember correctly, Rich Swan and Jack Gallagher, if I'm not mistaken, take on Neville and Noam Dar. I hope I'm right on that. Let me double check, please. No, I'm wrong. Ha ha, ha 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 ha. Why did I say Neville when they actually have a match? That's how stupid I am. Yes. Rich Swan and Tozawa against Brian Kendrick and Noam Dar probably something for these four to do I don't know why Rich Swan and Noam Dar have something to do but anyway I know there's there's a few broom between uh, Tozawa and Brian Kendrick but anyway in this match I'm probably not going to watch it and uh, I'm going for Rich Swan and Tozawa to win this match uh, the next match I'm going to go with and talk about is Sasha Banks and Nia Jax now yes Sasha Banks is Sasha Banks. She's the boss. There is a rumoured heel turn on the horizon. But please, surely she has to win this match against Nia Jax. Surely she has to get a victory over Nia Jax. Don't be surprised, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be surprised if she gets her ass kicked again by Nia Jax. I don't want to see another domination of Sasha Banks. Maybe this will work in terms of her rumoured heel turn. That she's supposed to be doing. But, uh, yeah. I'm picking Sasha Banks, but I won't be surprised if Nia Jax wins. If I'm being honest. I will not be surprised one bit if Nia Jax ends up getting a victory. But I'm kind of pulling for Sasha Banks. Because, uh, yeah. I mean, alright. I don't necessarily say it's going to be clean. But she deserves something. Sasha, I suppose. Even if it's just one little thing. She deserves a little something here and there. Raw Tag Team Champions Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson defend against Enzo Moore and Big Cass. Please keep the belt on Enzo and uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. I said this on the Keto and Jay show and I'll say it again. I think it's time for Big Cass to move. Maybe go to SmackDown and see if he's on... See if his real life girlfriend from the clutches of one James No Chin Ellsworth. But uh, yeah. Look, like I said on the Keto and Jay show, I love Enzo Moore and Big Cass. They're a great tag team. But Enzo has become an annoying little shit as of late. And like I said, my favourite moment on Raw, one of my favourite moments on Raw is when he got kicked in the face by Sheamus when him and Enzo... Him and Big Cass became the number one contenders. And you know and you understand where I'm coming from in this respect. Because the minute Seamus kicked him in the face, you heard a chance of, thank you Seamus. He has become an annoying little shit. And I'm, you know, go back to where you were, please. But don't become annoying, Enzo. But other than that, you need to keep the belts on Gallows and Anderson. You know, st- have them establish dominance, like I said they would do the minute they arrived here. They would take over the tag team division and just basically carry it on their backs. And that's what you need to do. Cruiserweight Championship, Neville Jack Gallagher. Now, if you're expecting a match like Neville had with Rich Swad at the Royal Rubble, which was full of kicks, kicks to the faces and kicks 
kicking each other's heads off kind of match. No, you're going to get a different match in this one. There's no question about that. You're going to get a different match. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. It's going to be far, far different from what Neville had at the Royal Rumble. And uh, yeah, I'm picking Neville to win this match. A little bit too early for Jack, yeah, but... Neville needs to establish dominance in this division and become the king and have his reign as champion. And to be honest with you at the moment, at this moment in time at least, Neville is the best thing about the Cruiserweight division in my opinion. And the reason why I want him to keep the belt is there's a rumoured match at WrestleMania that it'll be Neville one-on-one with Austin Aries. And I want that match. I, I will pay money to see. I, that's the match I pay money to see, let me tell you. No question about that. So yeah, I'm going for Neville in this one. Sami Zayn, Samoa Joe, which was was meant to be, if you believe rumours, uh, Seth Rollins and Samoa Joe, but Seth got taken out, and basically they needed something for Samoa Joe to do, I suppose, so even though it was rumoured to have Sami Zayn go for the United States title against Chris Jericho, but he's out on the shelf, so what do you do? You put them together. I'm sorry to say this, but at the rate Samoa Joe's going, this will be the total domination of Sami Zayn, because Samoa Joe is just a destroyer, he's a monster, kind of the the Ring of Honor monster that he was back in the day to, you know, two-year domination, and I'm sorry to say, as much as I love Sami Zayn, and I do like the guy, he's going to get his ass kicked. He's going to get absolutely destroyed by the Destroyer. Triple H is heavy, Triple H is destroyer, Triple H is henchman, whatever you want to call him. Sammy, you're in for a long, rough night at Fastlane, my friend. No question about that. Samoa Joe is going to whip your ass. I wouldn't want to be in the same ring as Samoa Joe in, the, in, this, in his mood as of now, so fuck that. Roman Reigns, Braun Strowman, I'll go to that first. I'm picking Roman Reigns, but I'm not picking him to win clean. There'll be, it's, I'm picking Roman Reigns to win by a DQ because there's rumours flying around that Undertaker's going to show up at the Fastlane pay-per-view and start his program with Roman Reigns. So I would imagine Roman Reigns will win by de disqualification. He'll probably get his ass kicked and become Super Reigns and destroy the Bra Braun Strowman because Braun will probably just bounce him around like a rag doll like he's been doing. Like if you watched Raw this past week, that fucking turnbuckle segment. Oh Jesus Christ. He just ran right into the turnbuckle. The turnbuckle broke. So it, it's probably, it'll probably be that kind of a rough night for Roman Reigns but no doubt he'll probably play Super Reigns and come back and take care of the business. And uh, yeah, I believe, I truly, truly believe that uh, Roman will win by a DQ. He will not necessarily win by a clean victory. It will probably be a DQ because I don't think they want to they wanna keep the momentum on Braun Strowman and not have him be wasted, to be honest with you, or waste his, or, or cut his momentum short, if you will, I think it'll be disqualification, and Undertaker will come in and play a part, and off to the races they'll go with the Roman Reigns Undertaker program for WrestleMania. Raw Women's Champion Bailey defends against Charlotte Flair, pure and simple on this one guys, Charlotte Flair gets her belt back, it's as simple as that, I will not be disappointed if Bailey retained, but it's the pay-per-view streak thing that's why they dropped it in the beginning I, I still don't understand why people got all high and mighty about oh bailey's won the raw Bla bailey's won the world women's title <laughs> fuck off bailey won the raw women's championship but they're going to give it back to charlotte at the pay-per-view and she'll be a five-time Raw Women's Champion or Women's Champion in WWE. And no doubt she'll end up dropping it at WrestleMania. I'll probably, probably uh, think that. She'll probably end up dropping it at WrestleMania at some point. So yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I probably truly believe that. Will it be a one-on-one -on -one match? I don't know. I just wish at the end of the day they'd stop playing hot potato with the women's title on Raw. I mean, like I said on the Keto and Jay show, there was a poll up this week on WWE.com. That said, who has the better the better women's division? Raw or SmackDown? And SmackDown won by 63%. And the reason why that is, ladies and gentlemen, is because they don't play hard potato with it on SmackDown like they do on Raw. Don't get me wrong, one title change, maybe two, but more than that, you're basically passing it around like if it was past the parcel or something. But uh, yeah, Charlotte gets her belt back and no doubt will probably lose it at WrestleMania. So this pay-per-view streak will end at Mania. And finally, last but not least, and certainly not least, the Universal title will be Kevin Owens one-on-one -on -one with Goldberg. Pure and simple, Goldberg wins this, and he will defend the Universal title at WrestleMania against Brock Lesnar and 
Brock Lesnar will beat him. If Kevin Owens wins, I will not be disappointed because we all know it's going to be Kevin Owens one-on-one with Chris Jericho at WrestleMania. I believe probably Jericho plays some part in this and costing... Uh, Kevin Owens the championship I would imagine I hope they don't squash Kevin Owens like they've done with Brock and everything like that that's not going to look good on him but uh, yeah I believe Goldberg will go out, walk out as champion and become the universal champion going into Wrestlemania and give Brock something to win for and you know make his win his supposed win at Wrestlemania more meaningful but if Kevin Owens wins I will not be disappointed because I like the idea better of Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho for the Universal title than I do Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho for the United States title when when will Chris Jericho lose the US title I don't know but if Kevin Owens has to face Chris Jericho for the Univer- for the United States titles excuse me that's just downgrading Kevin Owens basically He's the Universal Champion and now he's going to go fight for the United States title at WrestleMania. No, that don't work. So, all in all, my prediction is Goldberg. But if Kevin Owens wins, I will not be disappointed. But, it'd be good. but bottom line, Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, Universal title, WrestleMania 33. And there you have it, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed this quick little podcast, the review show. This will be going up on SoundCloud and the Wrestling Matters channel. If you listen to this on the Wrestling Matters channel, please feel free to drop a subscribe and like the video if you're watching this or listening to this on video as well. As well, Download this for free on SoundCloud as well. And uh, look out for episode 153 of the Wrestling Matters podcast this coming week, guys. Welcome to hell, Bray. For more on that, check out SoundCloud. Check out the Wrestling Matters channel. It'll be up Monday, March 6th. Or is it, or is it March 5th as I'm doing this? Please get this calendar up nope i was right monday march 6th it'll be up so be sure to check that out until then guys my name is anthony walker wrestling matters you've been awesome thank you and goodbye wrestling fans look no further for the most unpredictable wrestling podcast you've ever heard on the match wrestling podcast hosted by me dazzy dangerously with everybody's favorite captains the phoenix the butcher and mike larkin plus special guests promos and trivia Find out what's been going on in wrestling history as I take you down memory lane every week. And the butcher's stupid idiot of the week gets it! And see if you agree with me as I choose every week's segment of the week in the world of wrestling. The Max Wrestling Podcast is available on YouTube, Podomatic, Mixcloud, and Soundcloud, and the Swerve Talk Network with other great shows. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook at Max Wrestling UK or go to our website maxwrestling.wix.com slash maxwrestling. And that's the bottom line. Because we're out of time. Yalikalikimaka. Listen in, man. Be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday with Kenny Killer and the Gowden Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that, slap nut? Welcome back to part three of the Wrestling Malice podcast. Hope you enjoyed the fast lane predictions there that I recorded early in the week. And now it's time for Ron Smackdown. I'm going to do Ron Smackdown in this part, guys. And I'm going to do NXT and 205, as well as TNA and Ring of Honor in the next part as well, and then ICW. So here we go. Raw kicked off. Raw quick hits. I'll go through them one by one. Universal Champion Kevin Owens comes out and confronts Goldberg. Goldberg vows to be the champion and promises that he will be the Universal Champion. And Kevin Owens vows that he will walk out of Fastlane Universal Champion. You know how that came about if you've seen Fastlane. The New Day! In the New Day in Rusev, they defeated Rusev and Jinder Mahal. There's dissension in that tag team as well. New Day, the hosts, big whoop de doo of WrestleMania because The Rock's been there himself. So, you know, at least they'll get. I think WWE giving them the hosts is kind of their way of saying you're not going to be wrestling at Wrestlemania so here you are, there's the whole, you can be the host of Wrestlemania instead, that's my take on it unless they do get a match there but I doubt it will, I mean Rock never had a match when he was host of Wrestlemania so it's wishful thinking anyway, Tazawa destroyed Noam Dar, Charlotte and then got into a little running with uh, Brian Kendrick I believe, 
Charlotte Flair, Nia Jax defeated Raw Women's Champion Bailey and Sasha Banks. Big Cass defeated Raw Tag Team Champions Lou Gallo. Um, you, you you know what I think of Big Cass and that, if you listen to the, what to call it. But I'll say it again, Big Cass needs to be on his own now, uh, in my opinion. I mean, you want to talk about somebody who's uh, out of touch, if you will, or lost in the shuffle, uh, like Jack Swagger was, because Jack Swagger asked for his release this week and was granted it, and apparently he showed up on Impact. But if you want to ask, if you want to talk about somebody else who's lost in the shuffle, you talk about Titus O'Neil. And Sheamus needed something to do since Cesaro was going to face uh, Samoa Joe later on in the evening. Sheamus needed something to do, I guess, and he beat up J- Titus O'Neil. Seth Rollins suggests his WrestleMania status. He vows to be there. He vows to be at WrestleMania to fight Triple H. But uh, you've got to understand this as well. There's a backup plan for that as well. I'll get to that in a second. Big Show defeat the Shining Stars, uh, the Shining Jobbers, as they're now known. Gentlemen Jack Gallagher and TJ Perkins defeated Cruiserweight Champion Neville and Tony Nese. Just hyped to build up for their fascinating match. That's all that was. A match that I should have been that should have been the main event. A bit of Ring of Honor in here for you, ladies and gentlemen, with Cesaro and Samoa Joe. And I've already talked about this ma- this uh, contract signing earlier on with. Um, the whole Mick Foley bit. But yeah, Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman signed their contracts, which ended in Roman Reigns basically getting destroyed, basically getting shot into the turnbuckle and almost caving his chest in. But anyway, that is pretty much raw. The reason why I brought up the Seth Rollins stat, the WrestleMania status the way I did, ladies and gentlemen, is because there is rumours flying around in case Seth can't make it to WrestleMania and he's not going to get cleared before WrestleMania to face Triple H. There is a backup plan, ladies and gentlemen. There is a backup plan. And apparently they're using this backup plan on the live shows. The backup plan is Finn Balor. That's right. It could very well turn in from Seth Rollins versus Triple H to Finn Balor versus Triple H at WrestleMania. Depending on whether or not you know both men can get cleared for their matches. And who's going to get cleared in time. Um, to be honest, I would like to see the match don't get me wrong I would like to see the match don't get me wrong I, th- I think it's a need I, th- I think it's a win-win to be honest in my opinion uh yeah it's definitely a win-win Smackdown however ended with a burn down that's right I'll go through the results first and I'll go through the epic news of what's coming this week on Smackdown what's to come this week on Smackdown oh the results from last week if you will Miz basically shooted at uh, John Cena like he's done with with uh, Daniel Bryan. He basically did exactly the same thing to John Cena at the beginning. And then Maurice disrespected John Cena, which brought out with Nata- brought out Nikki Bella. And verbal words were said. And it's basically a setup for their match at WrestleMania because it's a mixed tag match at WrestleMania. Becky Lynch defeated Mickey James in what was a good two out of three falls match, in my opinion. Uh... Becky Lynch gets a revenge. Why, where this is going to go, I don't know. AJ Styles, Luke Harper went one on one, and very weirdly, even though I thought Luke Harper was actually going to win this match, AJ Styles defeated Luke Harper to become the number one contender for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania to face Bray Wyatt. So we thought Dean Ambrose came out. He was supposed to face uh, Kurt Hawkins, but that never occurred. And basically calls out Baron Corbin instead, leading into their potential match at WrestleMania for the Intercontinental Championship. Dolph Ziggler and Apollo Crews in a chairs match, and Dolph wins that match. Yawn. But the highlight of what was an epic SmackDown was Randy Orton burns down the Wyatt family compound during Ways, during Bray's um, invocation, if you will. I guess I could say that. Yeah, if you haven't seen this, guys, he's vowed to get that WWE Championship match. Uh, he says, I'm coming for your title at WrestleMania, Bray. And the next minute, he just burns down the whole compound, which was just friggin' epic. And like it says in the title of this episode of the Wrestling Matters podcast, welcome to hell, Bray, because he's going to hell at WrestleMania. Uh Randy Orton is just fucking phenomenal. I love this guy. I love when he turns into this kind of stuff and everything. It, 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 it's just beautiful to watch. It really is. It really is just beautiful to watch when he when he gets into this mode. I mean, God almighty, it's, it's just so good. It really is just so, so good. <clears throat> and fun to watch too. This is this is when he gets fun to watch. It, it, it really is as well. Um, but he'll have to, he's got a roadblock ahead of him. 
uh, this coming week. A bit of a roadblock ahead of him this coming week because this coming week on SmackDown, it's Randy Orton one on one with AJ Styles to determine the official number one contender. Now, don't get me wrong, I think they should just go with Orton. You know, go with Orton because Orton won the match. <coughs> Why does Orton need to defend his rightful number one contender? Yeah, big whoop. AJ Styles won the match. Ooh, whoop de doo you know? But we all know where he's going. Shane McMahon. That's where he's going. He's going to Shane McMahon land. And I believe, well, we all know who's going to win the main event anyway. Orton. It's Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton at WrestleMania. AJ Styles will go one-on-one -on -one with Shane McMahon. No doubt Shane will probably get involved in the match. We all know Bray's going to get involved in the match because he's going to want revenge. But... I'm looking forward to SmackDown this coming Tuesday. Now, that about wraps it up for this part, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys have enjoyed that. I'll be back in part four with NXT, Ring of Honor, TNA, and ROH. Uh, 205, I meant. Sorry. NXT, 205, Ring of Honor, and TNA, Impact Wrestling. So, I'll be back with that right after this quick timeout. So, stay tuned. Hey guys, this is Mike Larkin. And yeah, this is Stevie Nicks. To check out the SM Show podcast and more great audios, check us out on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash mclarkin92. And we are now on the Swerve Talk Network, Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern, 3 a.m. UK time, along with the Max Wrestling Podcast, Offshoot Radio, Sunday Segway, and the Wrestling Matters Podcast. And also follow us on Twitter at SM Show one and at Steve Nicks SM. You won't be disappointed. Peace. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Wrestling Manners Podcast. This is part four, and now we're going to talk NXT, Ring of Honor, TNA. But first, we're going to kick off with, if I can find it, 205. That's right, the Cruiserweights on 205. So we'll get down. I'll just go through the results of NXT and uh, 205, and then we'll go to TNA and Ring of Honor as well. So, yeah, we'll check them out now. NXT and T NXT results uh, two or five results are excuse me are as follows, ladies and gentlemen. If I can find the results, there we go. Norm Darby and Say Dorado. Kendrick teaches Tozawa another lesson. Tony Nese, Davari, and Drew Gulak defeated TJ Perkins, Mustafa Ali, and Cedric Alexandra. And uh, Neville delivers his state of the two or five live address, only to be interrupted by Jack Gallagher. All building into the, the pay-per-view match at Fastlane. That was 205, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're going to go to NXT. NXT this week, the results are as follow. The results are as follow. Like I was saying, here they are. If I can find them, there we are. Patrick Clark defeated Sean Maluta. NXT Women's Champion Oscar defeated Peyton Royce. And NXT Tag Team Champions, the Authors of Pain defeated DIY by disqualification, although there was some controversy. And I believe going into Orlando's uh, big pay-per-view um, NXT TakeOver show before the WrestleMania, it's going to be a triple threat match for the Tag Team titles, elimination that is. It's going to be the Revival, DIY, and the Authors of Pain in that match for the NXT Tag Team Championships. So that, that should be very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Now we go to TNA. A lot went down on TNA this week. Probably the greatest thing I've ever witnessed on TNA in a while. And that's Cody Rose throwing Josh Matthews across the friggin' across the friggin' outside ring. Which was just fucking hilarious after uh, his brawl with Moose. Fuck you, Josh Matthews. That's all I got to say about that. Right. Rosemary defeated Jade in the last women's standing match or the last knockout standing match for the TNA women's title. Uh... James Storm defeated Jesse Go Jesse Goodass. Trevor Lee and Trevor Lee defeated Andrew Everett to retain his X Division title. Moose defeated Drew Galloway to become the new Grand Champion, and that's when the brawl ended up with him and uh, Cody Rose and uh, him throwing Josh Matthews across the ring. And like I said, now it seems that Josh Matthews is playing a new role of Michael Cole, the heel announcer, which is fucking stupid. But apparently, ladies and gentlemen, there's rumors flying around, and I've been told that he is looking to be pushed out and maybe replaced in there. So hopefully that's true, because trust me, Impact Wrestling do need that. Let me tell you. 
I, I literally can't stand Josh Matthews. And in probably what was the most boring main event I've ever seen, Lashley defeated Josh Barnett to attain the TNA World Championship. Do not watch that match, ladies and gentlemen. It was, yeah, it wasn't a wrestling match. It was more MMA. But in any event, ladies and gentlemen, that is TNA. That was TNA. Check out the TNA YouTube channel or the Impact Wrestling Now YouTube channel as well. So be sure to check all of that out as well. And uh, yeah, we'll go to Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor television results, ladies and gents. ROH TV, uh, which was headlined by a television championship match this week involving Marty Skrull and one Donovan Dijak as well. I believe this was before Donovan Dijak actually left because I believe... If I'm not mistaken, Donovan Dijak, Donovan Dijak is no longer with the company. That's, I believe that. I don't know if that's true or not. I, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, but I could be wrong. So, yeah. Uh, if I could just find Ring of Honor. Bear with me, guys. But, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying all this. I'm bringing you the best that I can. Uh, apparently, Bobby Fish says Red Dragon is not done. Pretty hard to... Uh, to think of that, because where's Carl O'Reilly? I'm sure it said Carl O'Reilly was WWE bound, but anyway. Uh, Manhattan Mayhem results. Impact Rumors. Uh, Bobby Fish, Ring of Honor TV. I can't figure this out. Oh, man, where's the results, man? Can't find the results, ladies and gentlemen, so you're going to have to bear with me. And you know what? TV title. Uh, yeah, hopefully these would probably work. No, I'll tell you what. Let's go to... Let's see if they have a wicker like TNA. Uh, March, for fuck's sake. March 2nd, 2017. Bring up on the news. Uh, I will go to this for a minute, guys, while I'm looking for the thing, because I want to respond to GRs. Because a lot of rumours flying around that GRs going to TNA. Apparently, Bully Ray's in Ring of Honor. Bubba Ray Dudley's in Ring of Honor. So, yeah. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Ring of Honor results. And I've got some quick news to uh, bring you as well. But I'll give you the Ring of Honor results first. The Ring of Honor results are as follow. Chris Daniels kicked off the show and vowed that it's his time to be Ring of Honor World Champion. Adam Cole came out with Hangman Page and it looked like things were going to go downhill from... Daniels until Kazarian came out to even the odds, which led to a tag match and led to Adam Cole and Hangman Page defeating Chris Daniels and Kazarian. Uh, top prospect tournament first round John Schuyler defeated Sean Carr. Uh, the Tempura boys who faced Young Bucks for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles were supposed to have a match against uh, Motor City Machine Guns, but after their music hit, the machine guns were nowhere to be seen. Bobby Cruz announced that the match would not happen, and they received word that Emmett, that the guys were attacked backstage, the Motor City Machine Guns. And Ring of Honor ended with Marty Skrull defending the TV title and retaining it in a hard-fought match against Donovan Dijak. After the match, Leo Rush came out and challenged Skrull to a match for his title. The Rebellion then came out, as well, and attacked Rush, but the Money City Machine Guns and Jay Wright ran to the ring to make a save. I think it was, I think we know who was responsible for the attack, ladies and gentlemen. But I've got some spoilers and I've got some breaking news for you guys that I've just found out myself. There is, according to WrestleInc.com, the Hardys say they have signed with Ring of Honor. That's right, guys. The Hardys say they've signed with ROH, Ring of Honor Wrestling. And at the Manhattan show over the weekend, this past weekend, the Hardys are the new Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. They have won the Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles. They challenged um, the Young Bucks after their match. They challenged the Young Bucks to a match. And uh, they are reportedly not joining WWE. Finally, they've signed with Ring of Honor, according to the article. So... Yeah, I'll leave the article in the description below, guys. You can check that out for yourself. But Hardy Boys are now Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. If you watch the Martin Mayhem show, and apparently, ladies and gentlemen, as well, Bubba Ray Dudley is now in Ring of Honor. Yeah, go figure. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this part, part three. I'll be back right after this quick timeout with IC Dub, so stay tuned. 
Be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday with Kenny Killer and the Gowden Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that, slap nut? gentlemen you know what time it is it's not time again ladies and gentlemen on the podcast for icw took place in southampton friday night fight club and it kicked off with uh i'll go through the rundown the the, the list of the, the matches that came in uh instant reese beat uh, dct he won a half four match but dct fought back but reese just proved that he was a little too powerful joe coffee beat ravy davy don't get me wrong ravy Put up a hell of a fight as best he can, but Coffey was just too strong for him. And Coffey cut a promo vowing to win the ICW World Championship. Now, Kaylee Ray took on WCPW's Nixon Newell, or the former women's champion of WCPW, Nixon Newell, in an ICW women's title match. And Kaylee Ray shows why she's the champ. She's dominant, and she's dominating the women's division at the moment in ICW. Josh Bowden challenged Kenny Williams for the Zero-G title. Kenny won a hard-fought match as well, but Kenny is proving to be a great champion in the in the zero G division at the moment. He's fighting everybody that he can get his hands on. He's fight, you know, he's fighting all the best competition, and he's not backing down from them. Drew Galloway went one on one with Grado, and after a hard-fought win for Drew Galloway, Drew manages to finish off Grado with the Future Shark, all building into his match with Jack Jester. Speaking of Jack Jester, thanks to Drew Galloway getting involved, Jack Wolfgang ends up knocking him out with the Brass Knucks and gets the victory. The beatdown ensued after the match with um, Galloway and Wolfgang beating down Jack Jester. Grado comes out to save the day, but he gets a beatdown too, and Wolfgang and Galloway show their dominance and the final match of this show was Trent Severin one-on-one with Lionheart it was meant to be a non-title but Trent Severin came out and made it a world championship match and Trent manages to retain the title even though Lionheart put up a good showing it seems that Lion uh, that Trent Severin ladies and gentlemen vows to make it you know he vows to make his matches the ICW World Championship. Is that going to cost him? He'll probably have a match at Baromania in April. But, uh, yeah, is that going to cost him, though? You know, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Uh, Honourable mentions. There was some weird, weird match, weird thing going on with uh, Christopher Saint and, Cl- and uh, Liam Thompson. Apparently, the, the teaching class was in session for Liam Thompson. Shah Samuels comes out looking for a fight. Uh, he gets the tag team champions. And uh, Joe Henry comes out to Shah's aid. And there was a tag team cha- title match. There was a tag team match, rather, non-title match, set with Shah Samuels. Samuels, Joe Henry, and the tech versus the tag team champions, uh, Bird and Boar. And Bird and Boar come out victorious and proving they are the new faces of this tag team division. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the ICW thing, the ICW uh, rundown. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will be back right after this with a top 10 from War Culture, so stay tuned. Are you sick of professional wrestling? Do you want to speak your mind about professional wrestling? Well, if you like a wrestling podcast, why not tune in to the wrestling podcast where wrestling matters? The Wrestling Matters Podcast. Each and every week, I talk about the best in professional wrestling from WWE, TNA, ICW, Progress Wrestling, Ring of Honor, and the list goes on and on. Also, on the other occasions, I bring guests in as well to shoot the breeze about the one thing that I love that we all love, professional wrestling. So join me each and every week for the Wrestling Matters podcast on YouTube, AJW Wrestling Matters, the Wrestling Matters YouTube channel, SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash wrestling underscore matters underscore podcast, and any other podcasts that matters. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. 
Welcome back to part 6 of the Wrestling Matters Podcast. Hope you guys have enjoyed the ICW. Hope you guys enjoyed the Raw, SmackDown, NXT, TNA, Ring of Honor and 205. Now we're going to get into a top 10 from World Culture. I'm glad I'm bringing World Culture up because I want to talk to you about guys about them and let you know about something which I'll do right after this top 10. Top 10 wrestlers, according to World Culture, who purpose who purposefully sabotaged their matches. And believe me, there was a few, let me tell you. There was a few, let me tell you. Talk about ego and whatnot, it is what it is at the end of the day. Now, number 10 was Eddie Guerrero. Apparently, this took place at ECW's One Night Stand in 05. The great match that he had with Chris Benoit, apparently was sabotaged by Eddie because he was feuding with Rey Mysterio at that point in, on SmackDown and obviously One Night Stands back and Paul Heyman's going to book the dream match that he ever got to book in ECW in the first place and that was Benoit and Eddie Guerrero. Apparently, Eddie was booked to lose, which he did, but apparently wasn't too cat... Too, wasn't too keen about it and he was going through his personal issues at the time and whatnot, but apparently he wasn't too keen on losing and yeah... You could probably see that he just lacklustered in the match towards the end. I never noticed that part. But you could also see at the end, after Benoit, who was pissed off at him when he won, quite frankly, you could tell by the look on Benoit's face, and with blood tripling down Eddie's nose, Eddie mouths back to him, I owe you one. So, yeah. I didn't notice that was a sabotage, but apparently it was. Michinoku Pro Wrestling is the subject of number 9 because it was the Dirt by Kid. Now, this was at the time a British young wrestler at the time who was getting, who was making big waves. You know, he was making big waves in, you know, I think he made an appearance in ECW at one point as well, but he was making big waves. He was doing his thing back in the day. But he, he got invited to do this lucha tournament in Michinoku Pro Wrestling where everybody would wear a mask. And he got asked to wear a mask. But before his match, he took the mask off, which uh, I don't think he wanted to wear a mask in the first place, so he took the mask off. Much to the chagrin of his opponent, Great Sasuke, who didn't take too kindly to it. And why are you thinking he didn't take too kindly to it, ladies and gentlemen? I'll tell you the reason why. Because the Great Sasuke run the company, and Sas and Sasuke did not take too kindly to it whatsoever, Le legitimately beating the living daylights out of him, kicking the crap out of him, and basically just choking him out into submission in the match. Yeah. Don't fuck with Japan, ladies and gentlemen. Don't fuck with Michinoku Pro Wrestling. And more importantly, don't fuck with something that's surrounded by S Great Sasuke. Anyway, next, Rick Stein. This is number eight. Apparently... Rick Steiner was known as a bully, a bit of a bully in the ring and, and all that. But there was a guy that he wrestled who basically bullied him. You know, it was back and forth stuff in the ring. I think the guy was thinking that he was taking it, you know, that Steiner was going a bit over the top. I can't remember the guy's name and it, I don't think that's irrelevant. And the guy who Rick Steiner was facing took him down, tried to take him down to calm him down. And then Steiner rolls out the ring, upsets him backstage, but then Steiner rolls, rolls out the ring and says, I don't want to work with you anymore, and da 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 which forces him to tag out, yada yada yada. You know, same old, same old, isn't it? Seven is Bruiser Brody. Now, this goes back to the cage match that he had once with Lex Luger. Now, you can see in the match, I think the footage is on YouTube, I think you can see in the match that basically Lex Luger climbs up the ring and walks away from the match. He pushes the referee over and gets disqualified, even though it's a cage match. You go figure that out. But uh, climbs over the cage after he pushes the referee over and walks away. Now, pop much too popular demand or much too what people say. People think it might have been because Lex Luger won. That's what Dave Meltzer said. He didn't want to lose the match. He refused to lose. Whatever, but yeah, it was what it was, ladies and gentlemen. It was what it was. Now, next one is Koji Koji Katayo, spelled K-I-T-A-O. Now, the reason why this one's brought up, because this one had a bit of a temper, and uh, he got kicked out of various promotions in Japan, and plus the one that he, I think he got banned or banished from uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and he went and wrestled for another promotion where he ended up fighting, real fighting, even though it wasn't supposed to, John Tenta, who was known as Earthquake. And uh, during the match... Earthquake got pissed off with him and said, this is pro wrestling. Koji knocks the referee over and says that wrestling's fake, banish him, him from another wrestling organization in Japan. Yeah, go and figure. Brian Gumble. Now, an enhancement talent who wrestled in his hometown at one point, but on the other side of that ring where he was wrestling in his hometown, he got to face 
Perry Saturn. And enhancement talents, ladies and gentlemen, are basically jobbers that are supposed to make the wrestlers look good. They're you know, supposed to put him over and get him out there and everything. But since he was in his hometown, he didn't want to look like a complete tool in front of his friends and family. <coughs> you know, trying to be, and he was trying to be like Brock Lesnar, no selling, you know, basically falling down when he was not falling down when he was supposed to and whatnot. And then Perry Saturn just had enough and legitimately took him down and legitimately, legitimately put his submission hold on him and made him tap. Go figure. Mike Blackwell. Now, this was in a tag team match back in the day with the Skyscrapers. It was, it was him and this other jobber against the Skyscrapers. And this guy did not sell one thing about the Skyscrapers. The, the Ice Scrapers offense and everything. This guy did not sell one fucking thing. Thing. Not one thing. And uh, the skyscrapers did not take too kindly to this and legitimately, after the match, beat the living daylights out of him on the outside. Kicked him, punched him, boom, boom, boom. Just literally beat the piss out of him. Next one is Shawn Michaels. Now, this is a pretty easy one. If you want to know why Shawn Michaels is in this, go back to SummerSlam 2005, my birthday weekend, and it was the dream match that I was looking forward to Hulk Hogan and Shawn Michaels. Politics at its blatant best, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody thought that Shawn Michaels should have won, but Hogan didn't want to lose. Hogan wanted to go over. So what does Shawn Michaels go and do? Basically sabotages the match and oversells Hogan's for offense. One point, he was shoulder barge him. Shoulder barge Shawn Hogan and he went right out the ring. The big boo he even overselled that and everything. That's what you get basically at the end of the day because many people believe and looking back on it right now, I tend to agree maybe Shawn should have went over. But the whole product, they all angle behind the scenes and everything was meant to be that Hogan and Sean would go into like a little bit of a three match program but Hogan didn't want to do that so there you go speaking of Hogan he's next actually and it's the sabotaging of the WCW Dream main event in 1997 at Starcade where it was him and Sting now apparently Sting reportedly was going through some demons at the time the crow gimmick and everything he hadn't wrestled in 10 months and was out of shape and Hogan was Hogan basically at the time bit of a douche and they alleged this is all allegedly as well and backstage they came up with a false finish where Hogan pulls the tights and covers him and everything and then Brett out stuck comes out and stops it and everything like that I don't think that was the original plan but yeah anything to cater to Hogan I guess and the biggest main event in WCW's history at that point in time was basically turning into the big or basically turned into the biggest clusterfuck in WCW's history because it ruined what was pretty much a successful night for WCW and number one ladies and gentlemen was Yoshiko a woman's wrestler from Japan who was a champion at the time in an all women's uh, Jap Japanese promotion and during her match literally beat the living daylight out of her opponent legitimately kicking her beating her up much to the point where her opponent ended up walking up with a broken nose and two fractured cheekbones requiring surgery Yoshiko got suspended and banished and took an early retirement, basically. I was forced to, at the most. So, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to see that video, check it out on the What Culture Pro Wrestling... Uh, the What Culture Wrestling channel, the YouTube channel. Basically brought to you by What Culture Pro Wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. Also, I want to bring something up before I go. Before I leave this segment, right? There is a video, a top 10 on the channel of the What Culture Wrestling channel. That is, if I can find it... It's to do with CM Punk. It is the 10 biggest WWE crimes that CM Punk got away with. If you look on the channel, there's an issue with it. It's priced at not... Basically at £1. 99 pence. Or 99 pence at the moment. Yeah. It's a test, apparently. According to Adam, Adam Blumpier from World Culture Pro Wrestling, it's a test to see what people would do. You know, they've got their own World Culture Wrestling extra... What culture extra uh, on demand service now? But they want to bring some things over and test them out on YouTube in this kind of way. And apparently, the what culture wrestling faithful, the fans, because these guys have been a big hit on YouTube. There's no question about that. These guys have been a big hit. But apparently, the fans and the people are not taking too kindly to this. They don't like the idea. They think what culture is basically spitting in their faces. And I'll give you an example. The response video to this, the response video to this uh, saga, if you will, it's called Why the CM Punk Video is Marked as Paid. And I'll leave the videos in the description below, guys, if you want to go and check these out for yourselves. Is It's got 133,000 views. To be precise, 133,626 views. It's got 5,227 likes and 6,680 dislikes. WWE. Uh, the World Culture Pro Wrestling are turning into a shambles. 
at the moment in this kind of situation. I don't think people care. At the end of the day, I put on their website, Dear What Culture, please do not turn into Impact Wrestling. Please make this video free in the future. Now, the reason why I put that in, guys, is because this was the same situation with TNA because TNA put up the uh, TNA Impact Wrestling, whatever the fuck you call them. They put up the weekly pay-per-views they used to do in the asylum and they decided to put them up on their channel much to the point where they ended up they put up about 10 episodes and then they started paying getting people to pay to watch them you know putting these prices on it's ridiculous at the end of the day and that's why i put that right i look i'm a big world culture fan i love what they do i love what they've done i've got something in the pipelines for next week about world culture as well involving world culture next week on the podcast i'll tell you that in the, in the next after the next break so yeah but guys, don't do a TNA because this kind of stuff is going to get you to lose fans. If you want to do things outside of it, monetize the video. Do what you got to do. You know, do all that shit. Don't be putting paid, you know, marked as paid stuff up there unless you want to sell some merchandise or get that kind of way. But people don't want that on this channel. The people don't want to do that. If you want people to get them to go into DA World Culture Extra or something, don't start doing it on YouTube because you've got 1,030,746 uh, subscribers that this kind of stuff is probably a first class example of how to lose them subscribers just throwing that out there guys anyway i'll be back right after this ad break with more on what culture and what i've got planned for next ep for next episode and an outro so stay tuned Hey guys, this is Mike Larkin. And yeah, this is Stevie Nicks. To check out the SM Show podcast and more great audios, check us out on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash mclarkin92. And we are now on the Swerve Talk Network, Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern, 3 a.m. UK time, along with the Max Wrestling Podcast, Offshoot Radio, Sunday Segway, and the Wrestling Matters Podcast. And also follow us on Twitter at SM Show one and at Steve Nicks SM. You won't be disappointed. Peace. Welcome back to the final part of the Wrestling Matters Podcast, guys. This is an outro. Hope you guys have enjoyed the show. I just want to give a few things run down here. You know where it's at, ladies and gentlemen. The Swerve Talk Network, each and every week. Check them out. Daz, Kenny, with Max Wrestling. Uh, Max Wrestling and Sunday Segret, respectively. s and Show Podcast. Ruthless Aggression Era Podcast. Worst Wrestling Podcast as well. Also, the Offshoot Radio team. If I mention them, I apologize, but I'm... You know, it is a lot to get through. Also, check out everybody on there. Plus a few things that are non-wrestling related as well on there as well. Just check them out. At Swerve Talk Network on Twitter for more information. It is. You will not be disappointed, trust me. And yes, I'm there too. Also, check out Wrestle Island. Facebook.com forward slash Wrestle Island. Also, Facebook.com forward slash Back to the Island as well for more information on that. Shout out to everybody. Also, at Talk Brunch on Twitter. At uh, Rick Dara as well, the host of Talk Brunch. Follow him if you have any questions on Talk Brunch as well. And yeah, uh, I just want to give a quick uh, heads up for the upcoming podcasts guys i will be doing starting next week a wrestlemania top 10 podcast a, a, a top 10 taken on the podcast taken from i believe it's taken from if i remember correctly what culture pro wrestling so yeah be sure to check that out it's going through all the wrestlemanias 10 fascinating facts about the wrestlemanias basically wrestlemania 1 to 32 i will believe and trust me there is some humdinging facts let me tell you there is some facts that even i didn't know about as well which you will find out next week uh i will bring you wrestlemania 1 next week if i can fit in wrestlemania 2 i will bring you that as well but uh if not i'll definitely bring you wrestlemania 1 next week and plus all the other good stuff about the podcast as well hope you guys have enjoyed this podcast today my name is anthony walker and until next time guys episode 154 of the wrestling matters podcast i bid you a farewell peace out well enough is enough and it's time for a change Professional wrestling, this is it. This is us standing up. Yes, 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 yes. That's 1314. Tell death. Dina, I am the best in the world. Because that's the bottom line. Go, 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 sub, sub.